All right, hi everybody. John Meadows here with my friend Paul Callahan. We're getting ready to train back, but today's gonna be a little different. Um, one of the things I struggled with as a bodybuilder for many, many years was growing my back. So what I wanna do today is Paul and I, as we're going to our workout, we're actually gonna stop on what we're gonna video is we've got 21 tips for you on why your back may not be growing. So we're gonna take you through many of the basic exercises and uh, give you some tips along the way on how to do them better so that your back will grow. Because with back, I find that a lot of the, the, the challenge is it's your form. It's, it's your form. It's not as easy as say, just squeezing your bicep or just squeezing your chest. The back's a little tricky. And if I had to do a survey, I would say most people would say their back is one of their hardest uh, muscle groups to develop. So Paul and I are gonna to get to work. Again, a little different style video, but we want this one to be educational and simple. So very simple tips that you can use uh, to get that back growing again. All right, here we go. I feel like I'm uniquely qualified to talk about things you're doing wrong and build your back because my back was so poor for so many years and took a long time before I could really build up an impressive back. So I wanna start with a pull down. Now, probably the number one thing I see people doing wrong on a pull down I'm sure you've seen this in a gym. I call it chest cave. So when you're doing a pull down, ideally you want your sternum lifted like this. You don't have to have a crazy arch, but just have your sternum lifted, okay, right here. And what you see is people will do all their reps like this, or as soon as fatigue sets in, they'll do this, and they cave their chest in like this. So instead of being like that, they do this, and they start pulling like this. And what that does is it takes tension off your lats, your teres muscles, and it puts it pretty much on your biceps. So I guess if you're trying to train biceps, you could do these. So this, you don't want to see that. When you get tired, you can either lighten the weight up or just do partials, but keep that sternum lifted right here, okay? Now, the other thing is on a pull down, is when you start to pull, I see a lot of people jerking back with a lot of momentum. So they'll you know, bring them back real hard. I'd rather you stay in one spot and really focus on driving your elbows down. So think about your elbow and drive your elbow down and squeeze. So as you're driving your elbow down, squeeze your lat, as opposed to just jerking it with your back, your lower back. So right here, drive your elbows down. Now let's talk about a cable row because most people have access to a cable row. The big issue I see here is people pull with their biceps and not really their lats. So let me show you what I see people pulling with their arms. See, it's, see how Paul's just more mainly pulling with his arms? That's a lot of bicep work. Now what I want you to do, Paul, is drop your elbows down and pull back. There, see the difference? Think about, remember what I said on pull down about drawing your elbow down? On this, think about drawing your elbow back. So don't think about your arms pulling like this. Think about just taking your elbow and moving it back. Okay. All right, good. Let me show you how it looks when I do it too. So, and, new, and a lot of times what happens is when people go real heavy, you'll just see them, um, you know, a ton of weight on here and they're just doing this. A lot of bicep, right? This as opposed to this. There's a big difference there. So, I don't wanna see this. I wanna see this. Draw your elbows back and squeeze your entire back. Your lats, your rhomboids, everything. Squeeze it all. Now, the, the one tip that I gave on the pull down about when you actually start the set and using momentum applies to this too. So you'll see people starting, they'll do that to start, they kind of launch the weight and then the weight's right here before you had to do anything. So, the, so the, the row is simply to here. You don't want to do that. So start it here and pull. So none of this, okay? 
That is how I think you can do low rows more effective. Okay, another equipment tip for your back. Should you use straps, should you not use straps? I would advise you when your heaviest sets to use straps because your grip's just not gonna be as strong as your, as your lats. So you're really gonna shortchange your lats in terms of using the most weight that you can with your lats because your grip will give out. Now, I wouldn't use them on every set, okay? Don't get uh, kind of addicted to them. Um, but use them on your heavy sets. You know, like a dumbbell row or, you know, even a pull down or a chin. But try to save them for your heavy sets. This is a Versa grip here. Normally, you see me wearing the Elite FTS straps where you just slap it on and grab and go. This is what I have with me today. So, but just use a good wrist strap when you get to your heavy weights. Not using a wrist strap is an absolute surefire way to limit how much you can train your back. Okay, so keeping with our theme of basic exercises that you most of you are all doing, we're gonna do a dumbbell row. Now, the three things I see on the dumbbell rows that I'd like to see you not do is, number one, when you're rowing, I don't wanna see a twist. So I don't, I don't wanna see this. If you look at the lat contraction, there's really not a lot going on there. You just have this oblique motion. So when you're doing your row, resist the temptation to do this. I want you to keep your shoulders square and drive with your elbow. You notice the theme there, driving with your elbow, is that really is so key for all your back stuff. So no twisting is number one. Now, number two, again, another common thing that I've mentioned it's don't turn into a bicep exercise. So I don't want to see this, okay? I want you to lead with your elbow, okay? Elbow, not this, elbow. So focus on driving that elbow up. Now, the other thing I would say, the third thing is, the standard way to do, to do dumbbell rows has always been on a bench like this. <laughs> That's how we've always done them. I'm not gonna say they're bad, but what I would say is I would rather see you have a more stable base. So I'd rather see you do them like this, okay? Right here. So I got a good stable base. I'm not rotating and I'm not pulling with my bicep. I'm actually driving with my elbow. All right, Paul, let's see how you do. Let's. Let's review Paul as he goes. Oh here. boy. All right. Start with that left arm. Good base here. Okay, I don't like where he's grabbing a dumbbell. I'd rather him grab it in the middle. See how dumbbell's tilting? That makes it a little too much forearm for my liking. That's still a little high. Come down a little bit lower on the dumbbell. Yeah, try right there. I like that better. Now he's got a little bit more lap. You see how hard that is for Paul with that form? Paul is incredibly strong. But when you use form like this, now all of a sudden the weight becomes much more challenging. Yep. It's much, more it's, it's much harder that way because you're not using momentum to jerk it, right? Right. It's much harder that way. Yeah. There you go. Low rows. Now, here's another tip. These are very tough. They're very demanding. And when you go one out, all out on one side, do eight reps, 10 reps, 12 reps, like I just did, you'll be out of breath. So now if I jump right on my other arm, I'm gonna lose reps, I'm gonna be tired. So in between your sides, I would advise you to rest, take two minutes, catch your breath, so you can go hard. Now, you don't need to do that on your warm-up sets, obviously, but when you get to the heavy sets, sets that are exhausting you, you've gotta slow down, you don't have to do one side immediately after the other. Set the dumbbell down like I'm doing now, give it two minutes, and then go back and hit the other side. That'll help you a lot. All right, keeping with our theme of basic exercises that most people are doing, uh, I wanna talk about a barbell row now and why you may not be growing doing your barbell row. Um, number one is I would say, don't be afraid to use your belt on these when you get to the heavier sets. I think a lot of people, their lower backs, Maybe not as strong as they think it is, and it'll give out before their lats will give out. So I would wear a belt when you get to your high sets. Now, I will say this though, I would try to not use a belt as long as you can uh, to build up that isometric strength in your spinal erectors. 
but when you get that heavy set you're just going to need a belt and also that last tip i gave you on straps applies to this too or any back exercise pretty much not all of them but when you get that heavy set you may want to use straps so what about the barbell row in particular number one this is the exercise that i just i just see way too sloppy for him. just way too sloppy and i get it when i was in my 20s i like to put three plates on there, four plates on air, and just go to town. But there was a reason why my lats weren't growing. It's because they weren't even hardly getting any work. It was more lower back, traps, and biceps than it was lats or rhomboids. So I just want you to get control of your form, okay? So don't jerk and bounce the weight off the ground. Um, let me show you how I like to do them. So I'm gonna drive my elbows up right there. that as opposed to this i don't want to see that i want to see this so keep that form tight on these just doing the 135 pounds there i could feel my back working really really good so that's that's number one on the barbell row the other thing i would say about a barbell row is keep the bar in tight when you let the bar get out in front of you, I've seen so many people injure their lower back. All that stress shifts to their lower back. The weight gets on the balls of their feet. Keep the bar in tight. Keep your weight on your heel. So here, as opposed to letting, don't let the bar come out here. Keep it in here. So right here, as opposed to leaning forward and get the weight on the balls of your feet. That'll keep you um, from getting injured, okay? Now, the last thing is the position of your spine. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's okay if you round your back. I wouldn't advise that. I wouldn't advise that. I will say this though. I don't think you need a real hard arch. I don't think you need that. Just a flat back right here. So I don't need this. I don't wanna see that. Just keep your back flat, right there. Boom, boom. Back flat, draw your elbows up, squeeze your lats. Okay, so <clears throat> that is really, um, that flat spine translates to almost everything we do in here. A lot of times we over arch, we arch too much. So keep that in mind too, as you're doing your barbell rows. Okay, what about the other basic exercise? The most basic of all of them, deadlifts big debate right now in the industry do deadlifts actually build your back in other words do they build your we should we should be more specific do they build your lats they most certainly build your spinal erectors and they probably build your traps but do they really build your lats i think it's a great question because when you pull off the ground there's so much glute involved and lower back um, my experience was not good in developing lats doing deadlifts off the ground a lot of my clients didn't have great results fantastic for spinal erectors again good for your hips your glutes all right so what i'd rather see you do instead of a floor deadlift i'd rather see you do a rack pull from mid shin now i've got the cage set up here now these don't go quite low enough to pull from mid shin but you would just stand on something so you could just step uh, stack some plates up and stand on some plates and you'll be able to pull lower but I personally think this is much better for your lats uh, than a floor deadlift. So, again, just picture in your mind I'm standing on something. So, now the pull, um, when you start the rep, you're going to flex your lats and just pull your elbows back. So, it becomes like shoulder extension, like this. And you can really. Feel your lats working. Now a lot of people don't think that works your lats, but to me it's very similar as a like a stiff arm pull down. You're still doing shoulder extension. I get a great pump in my lats. I feel a lot of stress in my lats doing that as opposed to pulling off the floor. So I would say for this tip, the tip is simple. It's pull, it's do a rack pull for mid shin instead of doing a pull off the floor. So a rack pull instead of a deadlift. That's the tip. Okay, another one. More, two more. This is a dumbbell pullover. So there's two things here I want to show you why these might not be working for you. So 
Uh, one of them is a lot of people turn a pullover into a really a tricep exercise. They turn into a lying extension. Um, the other thing is, is they use what I think is not a good range of motion. They actually go too far until the stress comes off their lats. Let me show you what I mean by that. I actually also like to lay on this, on a bench as opposed to across it. It's okay doing the other way too though. So now, what I want you to do is get a slight bend in your arms and then lock your arms like that. So don't lock them here, slight bend and lock them. Now, you're gonna keep your arm like that and pull with your lat. So that's all lat right now. Lat, teres, probably even a little bit of serratus. So right here is what I want. As opposed to doing this, coming down, bending your arms, and then throwing the weight up. A lot of people turn this into a tricep movement. And that's why they don't lock their arm in place. The second part is the range of motion. So you want to go down as, as low as you can and still feel good, uh, still feel comfortable in your shoulders. You don't want your shoulders to get injured. So I'm good about right here. So for me to start going a lot lower than that to force it, it's probably not healthy. Now, the other part is you gotta keep tension on your back. So when you come up, stop right here. When I come up here, this is, I lost all the tension in my lats. Okay, so right here, up to my forehead where I can still feel tension. Work this range of motion right here. As opposed, again, to, as opposed to bending your arms and throwing the weight up and coming right here. Now anybody can do that with 100 pound dumbbells. Um, but using that strict form is what's really gonna help you on pullovers. A great basic movement right here. So there's two more. Okay, so we've come to our last basic exercise for back. This is more for your lower back or spinal erectors. It's, it's the hyperextension machine. One of my favorite machines. Very underrated. So the first thing you wanna do is you gotta have it set up so that it hits your back. And what happens is people get it, people get the machine too tall for them. So for example, here's how I look. I got this set up for me right now. So it's set up good. So I'm right here. Now, what I see a lot of people do is they have a setup too high. So now I can't get range of motion, it's jamming into me. Or they have a set down too low. Now all of a sudden I just put all the tension in my hands and glutes. So if you want to do hands and glutes, that's fantastic. But we're talking about back today. So now look at all the pressure, it's right here. So you've got to have the height set up correctly. About right here, okay? Right there. Now the second thing is, well, what do you do with your actual spine? How far do you come up? I see a lot of people come up real, real high. They'll come up all the way up like that. I want you to just come up until your spine is flat. There's no need to hyperextend. I know they're called hyperextensions, but there's no need to come up uh, past that point. So what I want you to do is I want you to come up to where you're even, right there. So, Make sure the machine is set up at the right length. Make sure you're using the right range of motion, keep in tension where you want it. Those are gonna be, be the big keys in using this machine to strengthen your spinal erectors. So I think I've covered most of our basic exercises, uh, things I see people doing wrong, which will limit your gains uh, in terms of your back training. I hope this helps. Uh, Share some tips you have below with the rest of the community so we can all get bigger backs. I appreciate you watching. And for my buddy Paul Callahan, we'll see you next time.